Welcome to episode 12 of the fifth season here on the Simple Doesn't Mean Easy podcast. Today, I narrowed down the topic more than I originally thought I would. This episode, I originally had thought we would talk about foraging because there are so many things that I love to find even in our own fields or in neighbor's fields or in a walk through town that I can forage and use medicinally. But it kind of got overwhelming when I was trying to narrow down what things to choose and how to really make a, I don't know, a theme with what I was sharing. Anyway, so I was realizing I need to make more elderberry syrup because I'm on my very last jar. And that made me think of Brad and Starla. And I thought, you know, maybe instead of a whole episode on foraging, we could specifically talk about elderberries, um, why they're an amazing thing to forage, how easy they are to use, how to find them near you, that kind of stuff. So I reached out to Brad and Starla and they didn't hesitate. They said, absolutely, I we would be happy to answer any and all questions about elderberries. So that's how this episode came about. I love elderberries because so many reasons. I really love the syrup. The first time that I made it, I was hooked and I've been making it every year since. I actually have no idea why it took me so long to discover elderberry syrup. That was probably five or six years ago, but I made it with maple syrup and that's not easy to find. A lot of people use honey or other sugar, but I made it with maple syrup and I tell you what, it is the best way to make it so good. So that's what attracted me to Brad and Starla and their business because they offer five different options of maple, not maple. <laughs> I'm always thinking about maple syrup of elderberry syrup. And one of those options is made with maple syrup. So that really intrigued me years ago when I discovered this company. And there's a lot of other reasons that I was intrigued as well. And I think you'll find those out as I chat with them. Um, so this is a this is a cool episode. I learned a few things I never knew about elderberries, and I think it's going to encourage you to go out and find an elderberry tree or two, maybe near you. Um, oh, I also want to make sure you know, Brad and Starla set up a special coupon code just for you guys, solely rested for 15% off any of the elderberry syrups or the teas or the dried elderberries or the kit that Brad describes later on, any of that, you can use the code solely rested. If you go to Abby's elderberry.com and use the code S O U L Y rested R E S T E D. So definitely go check them out. And at the very end of today's episode, Make sure you hang on till the end because I asked the two of them a question that they weren't expecting. And it just crossed my mind that, you know what? I want to know this. And their answers were really encouraging and helpful. Um, so what I'd asked them was for tips for anybody who's looking at starting a small family business. And I explained to them how impressed I am with their business. I mean, I love any kind of a small business that I can support if they offer a really great product and it's a reasonable price. It's not always the best price. And I understand why a small business just can't match the prices of the big box stores. But um, these guys we talk about actually their prices, I don't know how they do it. Um, but on top of that, if it's literally a family that's running it, that always gets me very excited we talk more about that and why, but on top of that, they even source all of their ingredients locally from other small businesses. So it's just like a really great combination of a great product and just a great family that I want to introduce you to. So let's do it. So guys, I'm so glad to be talking to you today because I think you're going to answer some questions that I've just never even tried to get answers to, but I think I need them. So I'm so glad that you guys are joining us, Brad and Starla Walker of Abby's Elderberries. First off though, before we dive into my questions, I want to know how does one go about owning this really fun family business that you guys have going on? It looks so fun. Yeah, we okay. have, we have a maybe lot not too fun. I mean, it's work too. I know. <laughs> go ahead, Brad. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it is, it is fun. Yeah. 
Um, but she kind of turned us on to elderberry. Like yeah. what we were trying to figure like. It was probably eight- about eight years ago. And I had a, a newborn who got his first RSV thing when he was three months oh, old. That thing so, we all mentioned. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I didn't know that much about how to help small children yet. When he was about one, I discovered elderberry and we have been making our own elderberry syrup ever since then. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I found it on wellnessmama.com's okay. library of, of things that she has there. And it was really yeah. helpful. I will say though, the recipe that we use now is far significantly superior. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but well, that that's one how it is works. Really Eight good. years to perfect something and you nail it, right? <laughs> so we, we had been taking it pretty casually for those eight years, pretty seasonally, I guess. Yeah. And we, um, our friend, John Moody, who started Abby's elderberry, Abby is his daughter. Okay. Um, and he started this about seven or so years ago. Oh, so you were already on the elderberry bandwagon before this business even. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. And, and so, um, I've known John for 20 or so years and we were talking last year and had the opportunity. He was looking to kind of loosen his load some. Mm-hmm. And um, we've been full-time homesteaders for a couple of years now. And um, it was just a good, it was a good time for him to step away and for us to step in. And um, so we, um, we got to take over Abby's last September. Okay. And uh, it is fun. It is fun. Um, the kids get to participate. Um, they all have their own jobs as we, you know, produce and bottle everything. So, you know, honestly, it's something I love talking about, um, with kids, I was going to say elderberries, (laughs) entrepreneurship for kids. Yeah, Like it's an amazing thing and it absolutely can be fostered in any kid, but there are especially some children I know in my family that like had an innate desire for it. And if I didn't notice that and encourage it, I don't know if, you know, if they would have gotten to the point they are today, but that's so cool because you're even doing that. You're fostering entrepreneurs in your family. Absolutely. Really- and it's just fun to make elderberry syrup. Yeah. Heck when yeah. you mix all the ingredients, it smells really good. Oh my goodness. Oh, and then I know. you get to pour, you get to ladle. Yeah. Into I bottles. I mean, it's a two-year-old's heaven dream yeah, world. Really. Absolutely. And you know what? Pour. When we get the kids in the kitchen, I've done episodes on this in the past. When we get the kids in the kitchen, hands-on, it, it like it makes a lifetime difference for them. And they start appreciating real food at a young age. So I love it. Okay. Maybe. But I could talk about that forever. Let's get back to elderberries. <laughs> okay. I know there are medicinal benefits, but I am not a science person and I don't truly understand the depth of it. So I'm hoping you can kind of just explain to us a little bit about what are the medicinal benefits of elderberries. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. So I I picked out three different studies that have been done on why elderberry works or on awesome how it works or how it helps people. So you're being all scientific on me. I love it, Starla. <laughs> so there was a study and this is cited by wellnessmama.com on her okay. elderberry uh, article yep. and I have it linked in the show notes or okay. you will. Yeah. Um and they found that elderberry the the enzymes that are in elderberries uh penetrate healthy cells in the lining of the nose and the throat hmm. and that when you take it uh it prevents infection or helps the infection to not spread through more of your respiratory tract okay um and then they they did a further study with that and 20% of the people had a reduction in their symptoms after 24 hours 70% had a reduction after 48 hours hmm. and then uh 90% were completely cured within three days. Okay. And that is kind of, that is what a lot of the research is pointing to mm-hmm. is that it really just has 
a major reduction in symptoms and severity over a short period of time and really tends to to work better than than lots of things that you could take yeah so even yeah. even if it's not taken preventatively mm -hmm. um, it's been shown to reduce even just symptoms after exposure to common cold or even the flu um, Brad, like, you thought about my next question. I was going to say, so is it something that you can wait till you're not feeling so great and it then still helps you? Absolutely. You absolutely can. If, if you don't take it preventatively, yeah, it can shorten your symptomatic periods. Mm -hmm. Um, it can like even weaken those, those symptoms, like they'll be less strong. Um, but in our practice with our family and, and obviously it's our business. So we want to encourage people to take it year round. Right. right. Um, but it has significant effects even preventatively too. So, right. Yeah. And obviously you're not using, you're not saying this on the marketing standpoint, because, you know, like Starla said, you've been right. seeing this in your family for long before you right. took over this business. Yeah. Right. So I, it is best to take it before you get sick, but yeah. once you do get sick, you, certainly can still take it. We would recommend uh, that you take it multiple times a day after you get sick. So we only take it once a day when, mm -hmm. before we get sick. Um, Is that something you, you to... guys like year round or do you find it's really just certain seasons year round? We, we it's part of our bedtime routine. Okay. Um, that, so you brush your teeth afterwards though, right? Yes, we do. they do. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we have eight kids. And so when sickness gets in the house, mm -hmm. it just, it can, you know, everybody's going to get sick. Once one of us right. gets sick, everybody's right. going to get sick. So we've added it to our daily routine before bed, before teeth brushing, um, our kids line up and we literally just pour it into their mouth. Um, mm -hmm. they, they just open up, we pour it in and um, it's just, it's become part of our routine and our. Um, and it tastes so delicious. It's not like they're coughing it down, you know, like cough no. syrup. Ugh. It's the best, <laughs> me best tasting medicine you'll ever take. Yes. Yeah, they love it. And we recommend a teaspoon for children, but if they get more than that, it's not going to hurt them. Yeah. Which is nice. I mean, literally a child could drink a whole lot and it, if yeah. they got a hold of it, it's not going to hurt them yes. like a pharmaceutical Unlike, would. I mean, you, exactly. they could be in serious trouble after yep. just a few minutes of taking a major pharmaceutical. I made a 911 call when my eldest two were wee little. I mean, they were like, they were toddlers and I had dosed out the medicine. They both were sick and I handed it to one, turned my head, thought I was handing it to the other, but the first one took it too. And I'm like, oh my goodness, when I realized, you know, so I'm on the phone right away to 911. So I know exactly Sorry. what you're saying. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so there's a, I want to talk about two more studies. So there was another oh, yeah, study yeah. Um, where they took 312 people who were going to be traveling across the world from Australia. Um, and they basically gave them either placebo or elderberry mm -hmm. and they asked them to keep a journal. And so the people that uh, got sick noticed a significant reduction in their symptoms after having the elderberry versus the placebo hmm. who didn't have the elderberry. Um, Interesting. Now they were just like, it was like a common cold they were getting or mm -hmm. like, common okay. Cold. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So they, they noticed a, let's see, what was it exactly? Um, just a, a significant reduction of cold duration and severity. Okay. Um, and then there's another study that came out of Norway and they gave participants elderberry extract when they came in with the flu mm -hmm. and they found that elderberry reduced the symptoms by three to four days and their use of rescue interventions uh, or medications decreased significantly, which I think that is something that cannot be understated, especially for someone who struggles with asthma or something like that, or for older yeah. people who really young children and older people are really yeah. the people who are in danger of something going wrong quickly 
with the flu or cold. Mm -hmm. So if someone mm -hmm. Brad's and my age, we're, we're fine. Right. If we get the flu after a week or two, right. but older people could develop asthma or small children. And so it, it really helps keep you out of the danger zone. Interesting. So there are actually studies showing us that people who are taking elderberry syrup are avoiding any other necessary intervention medically. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. I love it. And who wouldn't rather have elderberries for sure. Absolutely. And it's got to, it's got to save so much money too. I mean, the cost of medical bills is crazy. Um, okay. So why elderberries? Like how do they compare to other berries? I mean, obviously any fruit that I'm eating is going to be high in fiber, right? And the fiber is going to support the growth of the, the, those bacterial microbes that my body needs. So like what is it about these berries? Like, why aren't we making cherry syrup? I mean, maybe people are, I don't know, <laughs> but what's special about elderberries compared to other fruits? Is there something special, I assume? Yeah. So they're, they're often talked about as a super fruit. Um, and the reason that they're, they're kind of qualified as a super food or super fruit is they are off the charts when it comes to antioxidants. So okay. those things, so they have more help. antioxidants than the other fruit you're eating. So the, at the, with the scoring that they do for antioxidant levels, um, the one, the next closest fruit, um, is blueberry and elderberry has double the antioxidant count that blueberries do. Wow. Okay. You just made me doubly happy because blueberry is my favorite fruit. So if yeah. I'm combining those two things. Awesome. And we, we, yeah, we go crazy for blueberries in this house and, but the, the antioxidant level for elderberry is double that. And then if you s skip down to, uh, raspberries and strawberries, elderberries mm -hmm. have about three and a half to four times more wow. antioxidants than that. And then there's obviously there's a spectrum in between there as well, but, um, just as far as general um, properties, vitamins, nutrients, they are off the charts higher than almost every other berry. I love it. Now I assume you're, when they say this, when they measure it, they're comparing like ounce to ounce, because obviously elderberries, if anybody knows of them, they're tiny little berries compared to even a raspberry, which isn't very big, you know? Right. So I think it's taking the extract and, uh, equal amounts, you know, one-to-one. -one okay. And it's, okay. um, I was thinking the actual fruit. I'm, that makes much more sense. <laughs> right. Yeah, okay. So God. most people don't eat the elderberry fruits. You could make a jam out of it. Um, I've never even tried it. Is, do they taste decent? I've never, so I mean, I've be, picked elderberries for years, but I've never you tasted have to, the berry. You do have to be careful. So kind of as a warning, there, mm -hmm. there are two kind of genetic strains of elderberries. There's an American strain and then there's the European strain. Mm -hmm. Um, the European strain, uh, is absolutely, um, we recommend that you do not eat it raw. Okay. Um, so if you find elderberries, if you're foraging, be sure that you know what, which one, which one it is, which strain it is, because, um, there are some levels of, um, like arsenic, uh, low okay. levels of arsenic. It has a, a very low volatility point. So when you dehydrate them or or cook them into like a, a syrup or something, right. it cooks out at a very low temperature or even okay. a tea or a tea. Okay. Right. But, uh, okay. the American strain, um, does not, um, but generally we wouldn't recommend, uh, eating them raw. And, and just for people who might be foraging and think they have elderberries, there are several lookalikes, mm -hmm. um, that may not be, uh, the safest to consume raw. Uh, so generally speaking, um, if you're going, going to use them raw, um, you know, I would just say, you know, cook them. Okay. Cook them. Well, first. maybe that's why I've never eaten them. Maybe I knew this fact actually. <laughs> um, so I assume it's kind of a misnomer though, as far as what they're called, there are European elderberries growing, you know, pretty wild, wild here in America. I mean, it's not, it's so not like, I think, I think both strains do grow here in the States. Um, okay. We just, we were just at another, a very, another local farm mm -hmm. 10 minutes down the road from us the other day. Mm -hmm. um, and they were giving us some raspberry plants and things like that. And I found 
um, three to four just immediately clusters of elderberry bushes on their property. They had no clue what they were hmm. and um, did a did an identity with an app and they have the American strain just growing wild on their property. So wow. um, awesome. We'll be and here to- I am with 14 acres in New England and not one elderberry tree. But thankfully, I have quite a few in town that I know of that either the people that own the property don't want to forage it. Or some of it's literally one of my favorite bushes is in complete in the wild by a riverbed. So, you know, I'm very thankful that I was able to ID them and I knew what they were. Right. Um, So in my introduction today, before I brought you guys on, I mentioned that Hippocrates was said to have loved the medicinal properties of elderberries. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, like, are they part of ancient history? If we, if we go back, do we see other references and are they part of American history? Like what's the story? Yeah. So you, you have a lot of, um, written, especially like first, second, third century Greeks and the Romans, they loved Mm -hmm. the elder plant. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, he called it the poor man's medicine chest. And so, um, you have the the usefulness of the berries. Obviously, they're high in antioxidants. Um, the flowers are um, just as healthy and good. A lot of times good they're dried point. and used in teas. For years, um, I was collecting the berries and not even knowing about the flowers. Just mm-hmm. last year was the first year that I harvested some flowers. I didn't do a lot because I wanted to have my berries too, right. you know, but I harvested some flowers and I made some teas with it. And yep. you guys even have teas, which I love. They're using the elderberry flowers and the dried elderberries. Yes. Yeah. We, in every single one of our tea blends, we, we include berries and flowers. I love um, it. So they've also used the leaves. Um, you know, they've been crushed up and, you know, you can use it as a salve on uh, injuries oh, wow. and things like that. So do we see that and... in history too? Yep. The people, mm-hmm. yeah. Wow. So it's, it's one of the most, um, well-used plants. Um, and, and this is even, uh, I hope to do this at the place that we just found. Um, I'm going to take a couple. So the, the main stalks of an elder bush are hollow. And, uh, for years they would take those and they would carve them and use them as instruments. So like flute type instruments and things like that, um, they would use uh, the main stalks for. So it's just a really fascinating plant all over. I didn't know this. Now, is it only true for the very main part of the tree or is it, you know, the branches as well? So the main stalks are what's going to be hollow because what you have, your berries growing off of um, are going to be more like twiggish. Okay. Um, Wow. Didn't know that. So you literally can use every part of the plant. Can you use the root? Uh, I mean, I guess you no, wouldn't want to harvest the root. I'm not aware of it, but I'm sure okay. there's probably I'm something sure there huh? is a use for it, but yeah. it's just, it's really fascinating. So it was written a lot about um, the first couple centuries. Um, Shakespeare um, mentions the elder plant and several of his writings. That. So cool. it's, it's been a common thing. And, and in common use for thousands of years, the, the natives, uh, Native Americans used elder a lot. They reference it even in some of their creation stories, oh, wow. um, things like that. And uh, there's, there's even some lore that, uh, I don't know, I haven't shared this with you, that Judas hung himself from an elder hmm. huh. bush or elder tree. And Interesting. So there was, um, I mean, they get big, but the branches aren't usually right. wide. And then, uh-huh. but there was seemed to be like a stigma around it. Um, okay. And, and one of the sources that I read said that perhaps they, they created this stigma and lore around it was to prevent worship of the elder mm-hmm. because it was such a useful um, plant. And Interesting. Bush. So they but kind they, of came up with this story that they kind of gave it this, this cursed and- this cursed background to it. Yeah. Interesting. Huh. I'm going to pause this episode to remind you guys, you are almost out of time. If you would like to know how to make an absolutely delicious carbonated drink at home in your own kitchen, if you would like to replace soda with something that's actually genuinely good for you, if you'd like to improve your gut health, and if you'd like to do all this for just pennies a day, you are almost out of time to grab 
my masterclass on simple DIY kombucha at less than half price, only through July 1st. You're going to learn how to pick delicious flavor combinations. You're going to learn how to choose the right teas to, to use. You're going to learn how to even make caffeine-free kombucha and how to boost the carbonation if you want lots of extra bubbles in your kombucha, how to choose if you want to make it with a batch brew or a continuous brew and what those mean, and how to make it almost completely effortlessly. I am not kidding, with just a couple secret tips that I share. Guys, it pays for itself in just weeks. Actually, it pays for itself instantly when it's on sale like this because you get more than $60 worth of coupons and bonus offers when you purchase the course, which kind of makes it almost free. Actually, I'm kind of paying you to buy it. Anyway, <laughs> go check it out. Solelyrested.com slash kombucha, K-O-M-B-U-C-H-A. And find out what the amazing craze is all about with this delicious carbonated drink that is good for you. Solelyrested.com slash kombucha, K-O-M-B-U-C-H-A, and grab it before July 1st. Okay, so given this really long track record that it's been used medicinally, as far as we know, forever probably, um, I mean, I think it's pretty safe to say this is not a passing fad, you know, <laughs> right. and I know some folks who are listening who maybe haven't wanted to before are now suddenly thinking, I would love to forage elderberries. Like, how do I know if there are some in my area? Can you tell us like in general where they grow and like when, what kind of time of the year they're harvested, that kind of stuff? So right now, uh, where we are in Southern Indiana, um, they are, they're flowering really big right now. Um, you can start to see some of the fruit buds on them, but typically you would harvest, um, again, where we are, July to August, maybe okay. into late August is when you're okay. going to harvest some berries. And are they around um, the country in all different areas? Yeah, I think so. I think they grow pretty generally in most climates. Okay. Um, they are very common where we are. Um, and in fact, how uh, John Moody discovered the elder was he bought this property in Kentucky where his family farm is now and had a friend who was into foraging and <laughs> they just went walking around the property. And he's like, he was just astonished, like the amount of elderberry that he just had growing wild on his property. Wow. Wow. Um, so they do like moisture. Um, you can like, okay. You so the ones I found by the river. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So they do like riverbanks and things like that. But even the ones that I found the other day, um, they were growing along the sides of structures. Hmm. Uh, so birds are just dropping them. Uh, but maybe there's oh. there's a lot of moisture pooling um, off of okay. the, the buildings and things like that in that area. Um, okay. And that's where they were springing up and being really strong. But uh, we could probably go back into our woods. Um, we have pretty dense woods behind our property. Um but if we were to just go through, we, we'd probably find it all over. So hmm. it's, Fascinating. A, it's a pretty, um, it's not a, the most picky plant. Okay. Yeah. Which is, I think, why it is relatively possible for most people to find it in the wild if they know what they're looking for. Um, I will actually put a link in the show notes because I have a blog article that shows photographs of what to look for. So I'll include that for anybody listening as well. Um, now an average tree, like I feel like even if you are blessed enough to find one in the wild, for me, I have two trees I forage from, and honestly, it still isn't enough for me. Now, part of that is because I can't reach all of them, depending on the one that's by the river is in this really precarious place. And the other one it's tall. And unless I had like the right equipment with the right ladder and, you know, help from a few friends, I'm never going to get all the ones at the top. So what I'm saying is like, I guess most people, they just find one in the wild. Tell me if I'm wrong. It's probably not going to be enough to make enough elderberry syrup for their whole family for the whole year. I mean, it's possible, I think, but. So I, okay. I have a feeling that the cultivated elderberries are probably mm -hmm. worth starting um, mm -hmm. because I have multiple clients who have bought elderberry plants from really a local nursery 
mm-hmm. has a very good reputation and they are spreading everywhere and they are mm. getting enormous amounts of berries off their bushes more than wow. they can do anything with. So yeah, they, and they, wow. they're known to mul- they multiply like really fast. Oh, okay. So for some reason, the two I found in the wild, it's just one, but maybe that's not common. Maybe. Yeah. Or if you just, find one, keep looking, right? Yeah. Keep looking. That's, <laughs> okay. that's what I would say. But I love the, the fact, Starla, right? I was going to yep. say, I love the fact, Starla, that the ones in the wild, you're just not going to get as many or, you know, it's not going to be as lucrative. And that's kind of the same for blueberries we were talking about. Cause here in new England, I have hikes right out my door pretty much that at the top of the mountain at the right time of year, it's covered in blueberries. And I love going on those hikes and I take my pails, you know, I'm like blueberries for Sal, literally with my pail and I'm bringing home the blueberries, but they're teeny tiny. And I pick, mm-hmm. I'm not kidding, like three hours and I still don't have enough for a pie and jam. You know? <laughs> so the cultivated elderberries, it's going to be the same thing. You're going to have much more productive bushes probably. Good to and know. And then you also can control where they're going a little bit more. You can mm. put them where you want them and then they spread under the ground through a root system. So they're really going to mostly go where you want them if you cultivate them yourself. Good point. Very good point. Here, another thing, just mentioning like the historic use of them um, in that sense is that they were, when they were cultivated, like maybe they would find one in the wild and relocate it to a property that they were often used um, like on hedgerows. So mm-hmm. they can tend to create like a natural fence line. Mm-hmm. And so as they kind of run out and things like that, um, it's really cool to, you know, to even know historically, like when they weren't putting up, up you know, miles of rolled fence, like we do now for cattle and things like that, you just plant some elderberry and yeah, when, when, maybe that's why I don't have a lot in the wild here because in new England, we have so many rocks. We have rock walls everywhere and they didn't need the elderberries for their, right, there for their borders. <laughs> um, okay. So a lot of people in the end either aren't going to have access to the wild elderberries or they're not going to have the time and the effort to put into it. And I know you right. folks, seriously, you make amazing products. I really, when I came across the fact, I stumbled across your elderberry syrup because it has maple syrup. If if you choose, you have different options even. And I'm a sugar maker. I wrote a book about making syrup, maple syrup, and that's my passion. So of course I was like, I've got to try this elderberry syrup, but tell me about what you guys have, what people can find if they come search your site. Yeah. So we have multiple varieties, varieties of syrups. We have some that has glycerin and maple. Those you mm-hmm. can give to your even infants. And I then love we have it. honey and low honey, low honey mm-hmm. for people who maybe don't want to have so much sugar in their system, mm-hmm. even though it's natural. And then I'll let you talk about the teas that we have. Yeah. So just in the syrups, we we do even offer a variety, uh, an option that's just the elderberry. So no sweetener added to it. Okay. Um, and then, um, yeah, so we have the honey, low honey, the maple variety, which we use um, for all of those sweeteners, either regionally or locally sourced as much as we can. Um, I love it. And then. So you guys are a small family business sourcing locally. Like that's everything that I'm looking for in a company. And I love it. I love it. Um, Okay. So you have four kinds of syrup, no sweetener, two different varieties of honey and maple. Is that right? Yeah. And the low carb glycerin version as well. So you have five versions. We do have five. Yeah. And then honestly, the thing that really got me excited when I stumbled across you guys site years ago, back when it was John's actually, um, Mm -hmm. is the dried elderberries because I started pricing around because that's, that's what I do. If I'm going to recommend something to my followers, I I'm, I'm going to see, is it a good quality and how does the price compare? And I couldn't find anybody, literally nobody that was providing dried elderberries at the price you guys are like, are you putting yourself out of business? (laughs) I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, because, because of the amount, just the volume that we go through, we're able to buy in such bulk. Um, and we have a, a friendship and a partnership actually with another elderberry producer in our area. And so we're it. able to, to share resources and things like that. Wow. Um, so we we're buying certified. Are you guys just too good to be true? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I love this. Um, 
So your people have all the different options. They can, if they can't forage the elderberry flower, they can come check out your teas. They're delicious, mm -hmm. by the way, Starla, you sent me a box full. So delicious. I'm going to have to like go back and have a few more cups of each before I even know which one's my favorite. Um, <laughs> and they can also have these choices of, did I say five or did I say six different syrups? Five. Five syrups. Five. Four teas. But then I love that people can do the hands-on with their kids in their kitchen, making it themselves and getting the dried elderberries from you. And they're either sourced locally or from you guys directly. I just, I love it. Like good and stuff. We, if, even if you, so we do offer the dried berries, but if you don't want to go through the process of sourcing other ingredients and figuring out measurements and a recipe um, for, to make your own syrup, we offer a DIY kit as well. So oh, it I has saw that. Yes. all of the ingredients. Um, so we, so that kit, it only contains certified organic ingredients. Um, and it's everything you need to make, uh, approximately a quart of your own syrup. There's instructions on the back of it and, awesome. um, follow the instructions. Awesome. So sometimes it's a little hard everything. to have the kids in the kitchen, but if you're getting the kid, it makes it that much easier, but yet the kids are involved. I love it. Yeah. Okay. The kids I have another question for you because as a sugar maker all the time, I was just yesterday in TJ Maxx and I noticed what was called maple syrup. But if you look closely, it said maple, little word, flavored, flavored. big word syrup, you know? And I have a feeling they do this with elderberry syrup too. Like if I go on Amazon and I look up elderberry syrup, am I going to find things that are nothing at all like yours? Yeah, it's, it's absolutely nothing like ours. Um, even, even those companies that are like-minded to us, we have typically about twice the berries um, per bottle of syrup that you're buying from us. Wow. But the, if you go on Amazon and you just look at the ingredients compared to our ingredients, we have real ingredients in ours. Mm. Um, there's, so we don't, um, you do have to refrigerate our syrups uh, because mm -hmm. we don't, um, we don't cook them. We don't put junk preservatives in them. Uh, oh, I didn't have, know you didn't cook them. So that leaves more nutrients. Right. So like okay. once, so we cook the syrup and the ingredients, but then when we add like our honey, for example, That's not good. we've, okay. we've already cooled it and everything. And so, okay. um, we, um, you know, we have like, I believe it's five main ingredients. We have our organic elderberries. We have organic ginger. Uh, we have organic Ceylon cinnamon and mm. organic cloves. Mm. And then we have our you know, our I love it. Water that so nobody's ever going to see the words artificial or even natural flavoring on your list of ingredients. <laughs> Everything is real in our bottles. I love it. Such a difference. And again, and that, that brings me back to, I don't know how you can do what you're doing for the prices that you're offering this great stuff. I'm not kidding. And I'm not saying that as an ad in any way, shape or form. I'm just always looking at the bottom line, you know, and I, I'm so impressed with what you guys are doing. So before we close out, I have one more question for you, actually. What would you give as tips to someone who would love to have a family business, you know, and would love to make a great product that they believe in? Do you have any tips, any words of encouragement for somebody who wants to do that? I'll let yeah, you go first. You have to really assess the risk before you take it on, yeah. but you also have to be aware that you you get no prizes if you don't take risks. Mm. And so for us, we've been really prayerful about taking risks and mm -hmm. I am kind of happy to go along for the adventure. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and as we've added children to our family, we have seven, we have eight children. So I was going to say, I thought he said eight. Yeah. <laughs> we have eight lose count. <laughs> as we've added children, we've seen the Lord provide graciously. Mm. Mm -hmm. So this is just one more of those ways that we have seen God provide for our family. However, it's been walking in obedience, but also taking risks Yeah, that maybe wouldn't work out. And maybe we would have to be really creative yeah. about how we made money. Uh, so Jeremiah 6, 16 says to ask where the good way is and walk in it and you will find rest for your soul. 
And that verse means so much to me. And it's just saying in my mind, what you're saying that you have to step out, you have to do the walk, you have to ask, you have to walk, but there is eventually rest and not necessarily meaning your life is easy, but a real, a real assurance that you're where you're supposed to be. And you guys are using products from nature, the way God intended them. And it's helping so many people. So it's like wind times 80. I don't know. (laughs) That is always my encouragement to someone. If you can, if you have the option between taking something that people have been consuming or eating since Mm -hmm. the beginning over something that's made in a factory, you always go with the thing that people have been consuming forever. And they have. And if you can consume it as close to the way that God intended it or made it too, even better. Yeah. Very true. Yeah, I think well, you my guys... counsel would just be um to um I you you have to count the cost for sure. But one of the I think one of the most helpful things that I read was find something that you like and enjoy doing and then figure out how to make money doing that thing. Yeah. Good and, point. And that takes some creativity and it takes a whole lot of hard work and hustle. Um, absolutely and a lot of a lot of sacrifice um we uh and we we probably weren't even naturally we were we joke about this all the time i think she even just mentioned it the other day the we've been married 11 years mm-hmm. uh in a couple of weeks we celebrate 11 years you guys were busy eight kids in 11 years <laughs> just saying go ahead <laughs> if you if you would have talked to us 11 12 years ago 12 years ago when we met and yeah. suggested that we would be full-time entrepreneurs on a farm with an elderberry business, I think we both probably would have laughed. It would have but, made no sense. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. But you know, the Lord and his kindness and through uh, encouragement from friends and family and support, supporting each other, yeah. um, taking and taking calculated risks um, and being okay with the fact that like we might fall on our faces and have to do something else, but this risk is worth attempting that. And yeah. So, and if it's something you love and you believe in, then you've learned and gained so much along the way, even if you are going to fall at the end. Right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I don't think that's going to happen with you guys. Cause I love what you're doing. And you. also along what you're saying on a personal note, I would have never imagined ever that I would be able to sit down and talk with folks like you as part of what I do for a living and learn something new when I sit down and talk to you and just be encouraged. And I love it. And I'm so thankful. And I would have never dreamed that either. Never Mm -hmm. saw that one coming. (laughs) So thank you guys. This has been great. Thank you for joining me. Where can people find your syrup? Abby's elderberry.com. And they'll use code solely rested. And what's the savings? 15% for the promo code solely rested. Awesome. Thanks again, guys. So I hope you guys enjoyed meeting Brad and Starla. And I hope that if you have ever thought about maybe starting your own little small business that they encouraged you, they're a really great inspiration. And definitely go check out Abby's, A-B-B-Y-S, elderberry.com and use code solely rested for 15% off anything, everything. Snag up some great, amazing products that are going to build your immune system and taste delicious and that everybody's really going to love. And next week when we join you, well, I always record ahead of time, of course, but when the next episode releases, it's going to be my birthday. I love birthdays. Aren't birthdays fun? And I just thought it was pretty cool that an episode was actually releasing on my birthday. So I have a question for you. If you would like to make my birthday extra super fun, go leave a review for this episode or just the podcast in general. So let me know what you thought about Brad and Starla and their fun information about elderberries, or just let me know what you think about the podcast in general. But I would really, it would be super fun if a lot of you go over and leave a review to say happy birthday. I mean, you don't have to say happy birthday in the review because that would be a bad review. (laughs) I think you know what I mean. Um, So anyway, so please join me next Monday, July 3rd for my birthday. 
And you're going to like next episode. I just finished recording that as well. And I was so inspired and encouraged. And I learned so much about, are you ready for this? Dirt. So we are going to bring you the dirt on dirt next week for my birthday. See you then guys. And remember, it's easy to forget how blessed we are to live this life. So enjoy the simple everyday efforts. It's not easy, but it is so worth it.